In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural car reflector material. So this is the type of the material which are commonly around the headlights and they reflect a bunch of light. And they can also be on other spots of a car and maybe some other equipment. Now I'm making this procedural material specifically because I'm going to be releasing a Tesla Cybertruck Blender tutorial series. So in that tutorial series I'll show you how to create this render here of this Tesla Cybertruck and we'll be using this car reflector material on the back. There's going to be like some back trim on the back of the Cybertruck which has that red reflection. So when that tutorial series is released I'll have the link to it in the video description. But you could also just use this for some other reflective object or if you're making your own car. So this procedural material will come as a custom node group. So I have the texture coordinate outside the node group and that way the users can know that they have the UV coordinates on default. They can also use the object coordinates if they want to but because there is a specific pattern I have it set to the UV so you can UV unwrap the object to get that squarish pattern there. So you can choose between like the generated coordinates UV or object. Then there's also the scale of the material so you can make it bigger or smaller and then there's also the color here so you could go with like an orangey color that's kind of common for cars but the red one's the most common. You could also just use like a white one if you wanted it to be white instead. And then there's also the glass color, and so that just adds a little bit more of a tint, but I'm just leaving it as white. Then we have the Voronoi scale, which is that base texture scale. We also have the detail value of the Voronoi, so it'll just add a little bit more detail if you want to add it. But then also have the roughness of the material, and then we also have the glass roughness because this material is actually made up of two different shaders, so there's the roughness and the glass roughness. And then finally, there is the bump strength. So if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. You can also purchase my ultimate Blender procedural material pack to purchase all of my procedural materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So before we start, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have, or you can just add it onto whatever car object you might be creating. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to add a cube and I'll scale the cube down to 0.15, just 0.15, and then hit control A and I will apply the scale. Then I'll hit tab to go into edit mode and I'll hit control B and I'll scroll my mouse wheel up to make a bevel and then I'll scroll my mouse wheel a few times to add some cuts in the bevel and just place it right there. We'll go back to object mode and then I'll just shade the object. Smooth. Then I'll also go to the add menu and I'm going to add a plane and I'll rotate the plane on the x-axis by 90 degrees and scale it way up and just move it back here just so we have another object so that the reflector doesn't have too much light coming through it on the back. So then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera right here at the object. And if you select the camera and then over here on the side panel, go to the camera data properties, I just turned the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit. Now, if I select the background object, you can see I just gave it a principled shader with this base gray color, just a very simple gray color, and I turned the roughness up to one. So if I go into the rendered viewport mode, you can see the background just is this nice gray color. Now, as for the lighting, I added this area light right here, and so I just turned the power to one and just left it as a white color, and I set the shape to disk, and I just pointed it at the object, and this will give some nice reflections on the object. And then also if we go over here to the world properties, I added in the artist workshop 1k HDRI from polyhaven.com. So link is in the video description if you want to download it. And I downloaded the 1k HDR version. So once you've downloaded the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color and you can choose environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And then also we'll go up here to the render properties. And if you want to make the background transparent like I have, you can just click on the film there and turn on transparent. So the background is transparent. And then also if I go here to the color management, I'm going to be using the view transform of filmic and I'm going to set the look to a very high contrast. So I'll go into the camera view and I'll select the object and let's click on new to add a new material. And I can just rename this to Car Reflector. And then I will be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So to enable that, you can click on Edit and you can go to the Preferences. And then over here on the Add-ons tab, you can go to the Search and just search for Node and then just enable the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So what I first want to do is go to the Add menu and search for the Voronoi texture and we'll drop it here. And I'll Control shift select the Voronoi to preview it. Now on the F1 here, I'm going to change this to the distance to edge instead, and then I'll turn the random all the way to zero, and you can now see we get that pattern there of those little reflective bits. Now with the Voronoi selected, I'll hit Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate mapping nodes, and I want to use the UV coordinates. You could use object if you want to, but I find that it's a bit easier to control exactly where the pattern is using the UV coordinates. And then if you need to, you can go over here to the UV editing workspace, and you can select the entire object and hit U, 
and you can just do the unwrap. The smart UV project will work fine for most objects. You can see my cube is already unwrapped, so I'm gonna go back to the shading workspace. So we're gonna use the UV coordinates. So now let's change the settings of the Voronoi. So I'm gonna turn the scale to 100, and then I'll leave all the other settings how they are. So now what I'm going to do is put the Voronoi distance into the normal and I'll control shift select the principal shader. And then what I'm going to do is search for a bump node and I'll put the bump node in between the Voronoi and the principal and the Voronoi distance needs to go into the height value to convert it to bump data. And then on the distance value, I'm going to turn this to a point zero 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 two, So three zeros and a two. And so it's going to be very subtle. Now you can't really see it right now, but you definitely will be able to see it better in the reflections. Now as for the base color, I'm going to make this really nice bright red color. And here's the hex code if you do want to punch in the same exact color that I'm using. But it's just a nice bright red. And you can, of course, customize this later in the custom node group. Now let's also turn the roughness down to like a point 0.1 so it's really shiny. And you can start to see the pattern better. And then and let's turn the metallic value all the way up to one. Now you can definitely see kind of that pattern there of the Voronoi. Now this material doesn't really act like that super reflective material that you'll see on car reflectors. And so to do this, I want to affect the normals to make it reflect a lot more. So what I'm gonna do is search for the geometry node. We'll add the geometry node and stick it down here. And you can see we have this incoming value. So if we take the incoming and put that into the normal, then you can see now it's gonna have that really reflective look where everything is kind of like reflecting and it does look a little bit weird, but that's how the car reflectors look. They just like, reflect everything way more than a normal object. However, I do want to make it a bit more see-through and make it look a bit more like glass or more of like a clear plastic. So what I'm going to do is search for the glass BSDF. And then if I select the principal and the glass at once, I'll hit control zero. Control zero is going to add a mix shader and it's going to add them both together. So the glass can go into the top one and then the principal can go into the bottom one. And on the factor, I'll turn it to like a 0.3. So if I go into the camera view, just take a look at this, you can see if I turn it down, it's gonna be just the glass, or if I turn it up, it's just gonna be the principal. So this way it's kind of mixing in between both of them. And then what I also wanna do is give the glass some bump, because if you take a look at this, kind of where the glass is, you can see it looks super smooth, and that doesn't really look correct in the reflections. So let's take the bump normal, and we're gonna put that into the normal of this glass. And now you can see it looks bumpy, no matter whether it's the glass shader or the principal shader, it looks really bumpy. So that is it for the procedural material. It's pretty simple. So now I'll show you how to join it together into a custom node group if you want to do that. So I will click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output and the texture coordinate, but all the nodes in between. And I'll hit Control G to join it together into a node group, and I'll hit the tab key to go outside the node group, and I'll drag the texture coordinate over, and I'll drag both of these over here. Let's just drag this out to make it bigger, like that, so we can see it a bit better. And then if I copy the material name, I can just paste it here into the node group, so it's called Car Reflector. So let's now hit the tab key to go into the node group, and I will hit the N key to open up the side panel, and I'll be able to add up all the custom values to this group input to control them outside the node group. So I first want to take the scale of the mapping and put that into the extra socket. So this will control the size of the entire material. Let's click on the scale and I want to click on the vector type and change it to float instead so it is using one value. So now the default value I can turn this to one and then if we hit tab to go outside the node group we'll turn the scale back to one. So let's hit tab to go into the node group. Then I wanna add the colors, so I'll drag the group input right over here. And I first wanna put the base color into the extra socket and then the glass color into the extra socket. And let's double click on this to rename it and I'll call it glass color. Then I wanna drag the group input back here and I wanna put the scale of the Voronoi and the detail of the Voronoi into the extra sockets. So we can control that. And we'll double click on this to rename it. And I'll rename it to Voronoi scale and then Voronoi detail. Then I wanna control the roughness. So let's take the roughness from the principal shader and we'll put that into the the extra socket and then also let's take the other roughness and we'll put that into the extra socket but the second one let's call this glass roughness and then finally i want to control the bump strength so we'll put the strength into the extra socket we'll double click on this to rename it and i'll call it bump strength so we'll hit the N key to close the side panel. We'll select the group input and drag it back here. And I can hit tab to go outside the node group. And there is the final material. So we have the overall scale. You can also choose like the generate coordinates or object coordinates, but I'm gonna use the UV coordinates. And then we have the different colors. So you could do like an orangey one or like a white one or a red one. Those are some common colors. And then also there's the glass color just as a secondary color, but I'm leaving it as white. 
And then we have the Voronoi scale to change the texture size. We have the detail of the Voronoi. We also have the roughness and then also the glass roughness. So you can kind of play around with these. You can see now it looks a bit more frosted if you turn the glass roughness up. But then the main roughness is just kind of the main roughness of the material. So you can play around with that. And then finally, there is the bump strength. So that's how you create this procedural car reflector material. So I hope you find this material useful if you're adding it to cars or construction equipment or other reflective objects. And I'm going to be using this procedural material in my Tesla Cybertruck tutorial series, which I'm still creating. So when that tutorial series is released, I'll have a link to it in the video description. You can also purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and Patreon page if you're interested. And to purchase all of my procedural materials, you can check out my ultimate blended procedural material pack and to learn how to create more materials you can check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist so i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching